Alright guys, I did an interview on Trap and Radio with Clint Locklear about blind sets and I've had hundreds of people ask me about blind sets on Facebook and email and everything. So, for tuning I wanted to catch a couple just to see if they're prime yet. I'm going to show you how to do it real quick. We got four sticks. I'll show you these later. We got some dry dirt. I prefer peat moss. But I don't have peat moss yet. I gotta pick it up tomorrow. If you're gonna be running any sort of coon line, you gotta have double jaws in your traps. The traps I use are Bridger number twos. And I will have double jaws in them because you can pick up coyote, fox, bobcat, skunks, possum, porcupine. You name it, you catch it. That's it. I switched over to steaks this year to see how I like it. Uh, I got tired of leaving my driver at the last stop and having to go back for it. So as long as I got stakes, I can put my disposables on the ground if I have a hammer. <coughs> I use this for scraping out the bed. Just a little scraper. And I use a thumper over here to drive in the stakes. It's an eight pound hammer. I get tired of swinging. We're going to show you what a coon trail looks like. This isn't always a coon trail. It could be a, a fox trail. It could be skunks. It could be anything in this trail. Uh, coyotes, cats. We're going to go put in two sets. We'll put one on each side of the road and hopefully tomorrow we'll have two something for us. Alright guys, we're here on a location. This right here is our coon trail. See it going down over. Follow this thing. This goes into a canyon way over there. And the reason they're coming up this road is to through the culvert or over is this over here. cornfield. You can see they're actually almost looks like they wore a hole in the pavement right here. They go down and the cornfield to eat. And then you can see it clear as clear as mud. So I'm gonna get down my knees, show you guys how I make my sets. And uh, I'm a little rusty. This is the first one I put in this year. So I might goof up. Alright, this is the coon trail coming out here, you can see it. Most people would put it right here, and if I was putting in multiple sets, or not trying to prove a point, I'd put it right, one right there, because it's blocked down like you would a snare. But to prove how, work, how these will work in open country, we're going to put it right here on the trail. There's nothing blocking them down, there's no pinch points, there's no nothing. So we're going to put in the set right here on the trail just to prove that it works in open trails. All we do is we take out the grass just a little bit, kind of fluff it up, scrape out a bed, Ground's a little harder in South Dakota than Nebraska is. We got a bed scraped out. The nice thing about blind sets and without using bait and lure is the animals don't get squirrely on you. They don't smell no lure, they don't dig for nothing, they're just walking down their trail like they normally do every night to go to that corn. These two sticks are extremely important. These are what are going to guide the animal into our trap. I'm going to grab the trap, set it. I'm 
I don't run any pan tension and the reason I don't is because the animal's walking in blind he's just gonna step on it when I was in Nebraska I caught a bunch of mink last year in these dry land trails long ways from water so we're just gonna set the trap in the trail and just kind of nestle it down <sighs> Now that trap is not bedded like you would a coyote trap or coon trap or something with bait in front of it. And the reason being is it isn't going to matter because the animal is just going to come through, step on the trap. He's not going to be feeling how the ground feels. He's not going to get goofy on you. He's just going to be walking down the trail just like you'd be walking through a snare. And we're going to take our stake. I'm going to hold. We're going to make two holes, one going one way, and one going the other. About right over the lever, as you can see. So when that coon comes by, he's going to walk. This gets him centered over our pan. And then he's going to step right on our pan. You might catch him on the front foot. You might catch him on the back foot. It really don't matter because he'll be here. <coughs> Coyotes do really well on this set as long as you don't get this too high. If you put sticks out here and look like a a uh, guy on the highway saying go through here coyotes get a little spooky of it but if you just kind of keep it subtle short we're going to catch the coon and the coyote and the fox and the porcupines and the skunks and the possums and everything else that come down the trail Now, this is just dry dirt. Like I was saying before, I prefer peat moss because peat moss doesn't collect moisture. We don't have no rain coming for 10 days and I'm picking up peat moss tomorrow, so I'm just gonna use this. And if this was peat right. moss, we left off because the phone ran out of storage, we deleted some stuff, we're back. Now if this was peat moss, the set would be good for indefinitely until you got a big, probably two, three inch rain and wash it out. And even then it still may work. So we're going to go across the road, put in another new set, and uh, hopefully tomorrow morning we'll have some coon. Alright, we're on the other side of the road. we got a nice open trail. Shop in the trap bed. I chop it each way, forward and back. And the reason being that makes a nice soft spot for the trap to lay. Kind of scoop this off to the side. In. This stick's getting on the borderline of too big, but it'll still work. If the X is right aligned with the pan, a little grass over it, old coon ain't gonna know what hit him. So, 
come back tomorrow. We'll probably have a coon or two and we'll see if they're prime. So we'll come back tomorrow and check these sets and hopefully we'll have a couple catches for the video. All right, we come home. We were helping a uh, kids coyote youth hunt. We were skinning coyotes tonight. We set these traps at 5.15. We drove by right here at 9.20, 9.30. And I said, I'll oh, pull over and check, see if we got any traps. <clears throat> well, we haven't had them set for over four hours. And there's the first coon for the 2014 season. On the first set I made for the season on coon, it's a blind set four hours later. So <clears throat> I'll get him knocked out. As you can see, I'll get, after I get dispatched, I'll show you how deep the catch is with no pay attention. All right, as you can see, there's no pan tension, but they're just stumbling along so you get a good deep catch on them. That coon wasn't going nowhere. So, <sighs> thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something. And if you have never tried them, try them. They're a lot of fun. We're going to pull all our sets. I'll probably leave the other one since it's set. And uh, come back and finish it and pull it tomorrow. All right, guys, it's Sunday morning. We put the traps in last night. Uh, the last one you seen, we checked on the way home. This one was empty. But as you can see, next day, we're 100% on nothing but two traps. Better than a trail with some sticks. Um, if you want to shine on his foot, that's why you have to use double jaws on coon trapping. He's go they're going to chew. They always chew, so just be ready to to compensate for that he isn't going nowhere so thanks for watching the video and uh hope you guys have a successful season here's a picture of the set we make showing the sticks for the guidance here's a picture of why we double jaw and why it's important you can see the two jaws and here's my two for two for the 2014 season